bachelors. They need I would submit for the record, Mr. Chairman, and just say to you that I, I believe that we're going to make the changes to emphasize uh, quality health care for rural America, uh, recognizing that we can't have everything. I believe that that initiative, uh, maybe with some funding restraints or dictate tied with it, that flow out of Washington, D.C. to the whole medical community, including research, including trainings of uh, physicians that are critically important. We're going to have to have some directive from uh, Washington, and I suggest that while Nebraska and other states have furnished some lead in this area, uh, they don't have the enforcement hammer that is necessary to have it uh, looked at more realistically. And maybe a health care initiative is an idea for rural America that uh, you could pursue and look at further. Thank you very much. Thank you. Senator Simon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to welcome uh, Secretary Sullivan to this uh, committee. And uh, we're very, um, I've known the Secretary for some years, and uh, I think the President is to be applauded on his appointment. Let me, uh, having said all those good things now, uh, let me ask is the cut in Medicare driven by the status of the Medicare trust fund or by the desire to keep the deficit down? Uh, thank you, Senator Simon, um, for your uh, kind remarks. The, the changes in uh, Medicare funding, uh, first of all, um, do represent uh, an increase of uh, some $8 billion uh, in 1990 over the uh, 1989 level. So really, what we have is a restraint in the growth, the rate of growth uh, in, in that program because of the fact that at the current rate of growth of uh, some uh, 14 or 15 percent uh, annually, we would project that um, by the year uh, 2000, we would really have double the funds uh, going towards uh, this program that, that we have now. And we simply don't have the um, funds to support that level of growth. At the same time, we, are doing, uh, we see this growth when we do have excess capacity in the system. 60% uh, occupancy rate uh, in um, our uh, urban hospitals and 40% occupancy rate in our uh, rural hospitals. Uh, as you know, there has been a shift from in-hospital to ambulatory care, which I support and applaud, and it means that uh, perhaps what was needed 20 years ago in terms of uh, inpatient facilities, we don't need that now, and we really cannot afford to support that. We need to free those funds up to target them in other areas where they are, are needed. So the um, President's budget really is designed to address that, to um, try and restrain uh, the spending. We also have, uh, so far as physicians are concerned, I believe around a dozen procedures that have been identified uh, by the Inspector General as being overpriced. Um, uh, and we want to get those costs uh, in line as well as um, remove any incentive for procedures to be done that are not uh, appropriate or not, are not needed. So we're trying to, on the one hand, provide the services that are needed, but at the same time, restrain the growth uh, in our uh, budget because uh, it really has been excessive and uh, we have the highest percentage of a gross national product going towards health care of any in, of the industrialized uh, nations. But yet our health care is not uh, the uh, top in terms of indices such as infant mortality and others. I, I agree with the latter part of your statement com completely and I think one of these years, and it won't happen this year, we're going to have to have a just a real look at the overall picture of where we're going in, in health care. Each of us up here is a little bit provincial. You will find that. Uh, but sometimes by looking at our own state, we get a, a fair picture of what's happening in the universe out there. You're correct when you say there is an increase in Medicare funding, but there is, if we were to keep at current policy levels, it would be another $5 billion. That cut is one that will affect most those hospitals, as far as the Part A funding, those hospitals that serve primarily the least fortunate. When you, when you look in Illinois, the hospitals that have closed, we've had 32 hospitals closed in the last eight years. State of Texas, I don't see Texas represented here right now, 
Texas has had 81 hospitals closed. And you ask, where are they closed? Well, the rural hospitals, the poorest area in our state is around Carroll, Illinois. The Carroll Hospital has closed. You look in the city of Chicago, the hospitals that have closed are on the west side of Chicago, on the south side of Chicago. And my fear is we are accelerating that trend with this kind of a cut. Uh, I had breakfast recently with someone who is in a responsible position who said three hospitals serving inner city poor are very close to closing. Um, any comments on what the impact of this $5 billion cut would be in terms of who is really going to feel the impact of that? Well, Senator Simon, it would be um, difficult to um, answer that precisely, but uh, let me tell you from my own experience that in Atlanta, uh, we had a hospital close a little bit more than a year ago that um, was in the inner city and uh, served um, a low-income uh, minority population. That hospital closed as a 140-bed facility, but the impact on the community was negligible because there are many other hospitals uh, available uh, right in that uh, uh, area uh, which uh, have easily taken up the, uh, up the slack. I would say that in Atlanta, which I know most about, we still have excess capacity. Uh, the um, the uh, problem is, uh, unfortunately, many hospitals or hospital administrators all want to have 500-bed facilities with nuclear magnetic resonance facilities, cardiovascular surgery, et cetera, and efforts to try and rationalize the system uh, to avoid unnecessary duplication have not been uh, very uh, successful. And we therefore find that um, we, our costs have um, escalated because when a facility purchases uh, uh, a nuclear magnetic resonance uh, uh, machine or sets up a team in cardiovascular surgery, those costs, but if those are not uh, adequately utilized, then those costs are passed on uh, you know, in the system. So we certainly are, on the one hand, very much concerned about uh, providing access to um, uh, health care uh, for the poor and for minorities, but um, every facility that exists um, doesn't mean that uh, if that facility uh, disappears that uh, those uh, populations are necessarily going to be adversely affected. We have to look at each uh, instance and certainly try and make sure that that doesn't happen where the population would be uh, adversely affected. We need to have those funds available, say, for the WIC program, for Head Start, uh, for implementation of welfare reform legislation, uh, as well as other parts of the health care system. So it really is a difficult process of adjustment that uh, we have to uh, go through in order to husband uh, most effectively the dollars that we do have and provide the services to the population you know, that are most needed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Simon. Uh, Senator Nichols. Chairman, thank you very much. You know, they, they recalled when servicemen came back from the Second World War, or Korean War, what were they met with? They were met with one of the most ambitious housing production programs ever implemented by the, by the, by the country. They were met with the GI Bill of Rights. What are Vietnam veterans met with? The most, ho the most severe housing crisis. This White House conference is something that I think is very, very, very important. Important to, uh, to capture the attention of the American public, so corrective and... <clears throat> Just to drive home the point that he's made about housing, in a normal year, tens of thousands of housing units are lost to uh, what used to be called urban renewal, to private development, to the regular decay of housing units that are old and falling down. And it used to be that we would replace at least that many units every year and then some for our growing population. Well, what's happened is the decay and the destruction of housing that normally takes place every year is continuing. But for the first time since before World War II, we are not replacing those units every year. 
And so there is a net decline of housing units year by year by year. That's the basic reason why we have uh, these hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children sleeping on the sidewalks of every major city in America. Now, as uh, Mayor Flynn has, uh, has pointed out on so many occasions, the policies toward the treatment of the mentally ill are, represent a contributing factor. The neglect of veterans is a contributing factor. I think I was listening to you speak and I was trying to recall the statistic. I think somewhere between 40 and 50 percent of the homeless men are veterans. If I'm not mistaken, it's that high. Is that, do you have the statistic off? Do I, we know that? I, I, don't I, believe that, I believe that's right. But uh, that, that tells us that the Veterans Administration has more of a responsibility there. Uh, it is related to the problems of domestic violence. I went out on uh, uh, patrol with the Nashville Police Department last uh, weekend, and I was asking uh, uh, the sergeant I was riding with, uh, what is the most common uh, uh, problem that you have to deal with? Domestic violence. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, it is a significant uh, cause of homelessness because a mother and her children may feel like they have to leave the home in order to escape a violent situation. If there is no affordable housing available uh, to rent, then they end up on the, on the sidewalks or they face the choice of, of going back into the violent situation. So there are a lot of different factors involved, principal among them housing. We have a commitment among the American people. We have an energetic and committed a new Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. We have a new administration extending the hand of bipartisanship. We have a Congress, Republicans and Democrats alike, who want to respond to the American people's desire for a solution to homelessness. It's the ideal set of circumstances for a White House conference on homelessness to pull together the solutions. Um, we'll be glad to respond to questions. Yeah. Well, it's really more than a summit. It brings together the homeless uh, advocacy groups, but it brings mayors in, and it brings the uh, housing authority people, and the mental health professionals, and those who work with veterans, and those who work with victims of domestic violence, and runaway teenagers, and drug abuse, and alcoholism counselors, and all of those who have a, a handle on some part of the problem of homelessness. And does that raise expectations? Yes, I suppose it does. That's one reason why we're doing it, I guess we'd have to admit. Uh, but I think it's time to give some reason for hope and raise some expectations that, that there's an end to this uh, problem and that there is a, a realistic uh, hope that we can solve. Because I think that's the case if we bring all of the committed people together and lay out the solutions. Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I, I think that it's a, uh, a relatively cost-free uh, thing for them to support. Uh, yes, it would raise expectations. But Secretary Kemp is doing that anyway by going to visit homeless shelters and talking with uh, homeless people. He's doing that anyway, and he should do that. Uh, because that's what government should be doing, is identifying problems and then solving them. And uh, we shouldn't be afraid of raising uh, expectations. Do you know any idea of the housing crisis? Have, have we? Uh, I have not, uh, uh, just informally with people who said, you know, it so sounds like, uh, but I have not uh, done it uh, in, a, in a formal way. I don't think, I would doubt they would do that. I think there is a sincerity in the Bush administration and, uh, and on the part of Secretary Kemp to really see if there are some new ways to, to uh, tackle this problem. Now, there is a likelihood that they'll find uh, that, as Mayor Flynn says, it really can't be solved until there's a stronger commitment to affordable housing. And that, that could eventually mean, have a budget impact. And so they might 
uh, see that coming and, and be reluctant to go down that road. But I, I don't think so. I think they're really uh, interested in approaching it in a sincere way and trying to find a solution to it. And, uh, you know, White House conferences are usually good for presidents, no matter what the subject is. It gives uh, any president and his administration an opportunity to really get on top of a problem. And uh, almost all of them have been uh, big successes. Uh, uh, and, and I would hope this one would be, too. Well, there are a couple of issues. One is the issue of homelessness, and then the other issue is uh, expanding the supply of permanent affordable housing. Uh, I think by having a White House conference on homelessness really gives uh, people to focus in on one of the most important domestic issues facing this country. And uh, I think once the American public understand the extent of the crisis of homelessness and who the people are who in fact are homeless, I think it will cause an uproar in the American public that they will demand that their federal officials, including the President of the United States, to take action to deal with this outrage, this, this, this scar on the American conscience. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, there, there's, there's, there's two roads to pursue, and I think this is a very important road to have this White House conference. To answer your question, uh, this has the support also of the National League of Cities, which I brought it before their entire membership of 10,000 elected officials supporting uh, Senator Gore's call for a White House conference. Uh, on behalf of the mayors, during the presidential campaign, I had sent a letter to both uh, Governor Dukakis and uh, Vice President Bush uh, in fact, received a very favorable letter from the Vice President uh, indicating that he thought that this was a very important priority that needed to be addressed by the federal government. And uh, I'm, think, I'm hoping that this call by Senator Gore will give that impetus to uh, have this White House conference on homelessness. Let me, let me, let me add to that if I could. Um, my wife, Tipper Gore, was going to be here this morning, but there was an illness in her family that prevented her from being here. She has uh, been involved in uh, creating this project called Families for the Homeless that has created a traveling uh, photo exhibit by some of the finest uh, uh, black and white photographers in the United States that has had the same kind of impact that you were talking about making people aware of what the homeless problem looks like. I raise that partly to, to make the following point. Barbara Bush agreed to be the honorary chairperson of that uh, project and is personally very interested in the, in the crisis of homelessness. And uh, another uh, uh, a wife of an administration official, Susan Baker, who is personally just very strongly committed to this whole issue, has uh, joined with the, the First Lady in bringing new attention to this problem. So it's not only Secretary Kemp, but there are many in the, admi in the administration and influential with the administration who are really searching for a way to, to solve this problem. How many from Tennessee? Have you got that down yet? I That's pretty much in line with the way previous White House conferences have been designed. Uh, we took the uh, experiences uh, that other White House conferences have had and tried to build on their successes. You want to get uh, all the key people who need to be there in order to get the critical mass and the involvement of each different policy sector. I don't think that's too many. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, isn't that right, Bill? This is Bill Mason on my staff. Uh, it's it when you use the phrase conference, you know, it's not as if you have uh, 12 to 15 people sitting around a table. Uh, it's you will have 12 to 15 people, but then you have a lot of others learning from them and participating indirectly. You have lots of workshops going on on all different aspects of it, and so it's a uh, it, it's an appropriate number, I think, 700. Well, uh, the Senate hearings and those two volumes were extremely valuable. I remember when uh, my wife and I went on a, an overseas trip uh, about four years ago. When were those here? We had more volunteers than we had actual uh, guests. And that's because the, the, the media and, 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 and some public officials involved, like Senator Gore's wife. And I know firsthand the work and the commitment that she has. So a White House conference would just give more people an opportunity. It clearly is a winnable problem. Now, whether or not you want to win the housing issue is another issue, and I think you asked a good question, sir. That's a question that's going to require, that's a, that's going to require a significant amount of resources. Federal government, we've got to move beyond shelter, you see. The answer is not more shelter. The answer is more permanent, affordable housing. And job training, and health care, mm -hmm. and uh, all these other things. We've got, to, we've got to wait two months. For more comprehensive solutions. But of course, we must continue working right now on the needs of the moment to deal. Uh, I agree with the thrust of your question. Uh, we, we, we've got to continue dealing with the, uh, with the problem as we find it right now. But I think that, you know, sometimes I, I've had this experience before. You can, you can have a good idea that's going to help, but it takes a long time to put it into place, and there are other things that require immediate attention. Does that mean that you just put off that uh, longer term? Uh, action? No, it doesn't. You do both, and you try to solve the problem right now, but you plan for this uh, event that may make a tremendous difference in our ability to solve the problems of today, some of which may be there still 18 months from now.